Look, let's be real. There's nothing around you that's pushing you to be more masculine. If there wasn't this current movement that's happening right now as a counterculture push for men, most of us would be drowned in feminism, sexuality, lust, and nothing that encourages you to be a true man. So today, boys, I'm going to show you how to be masculine and remain masculine in a feminine society. Number one, I need you to start by understanding that your feelings do not matter. You need to freaking stop it, bro. Snap the hell out of it. Look. This is not to invalidate your feelings. Feelings are very true. I feel, everybody feels stuff inside. The reality of the matter is that your feelings aren't in the real world. They're not doing anything for you. When you're at your bottom, when you're low, when you're broke, when you're beat down, what is that hug going to do from you? What is crying going to do? What is your therapist going to do from you except make you more broke? You need to understand that in the real world, you need to take control of your own life. So when I say feelings don't matter, it's not to invalidate them. They're very real. What I want you to do is not allow them to control your life and your actions. So when you're still down, when you're broke, when you feel like crap, when you feel like a loser, when you've been just rejected, you still work. Right? You still have to focus. How do I increase my bank account? How do I increase my skills? How can I be more healthy? What can I do in my life to be better? What can I do to get more girls, to get the girl that I want? You need to focus on your end goal and not on what you're going through right now. Number two, bro, grow a damn beard. Let's be real. You want to look more masculine? Put on a beard. You want to add five years of maturity to your face? Put on a beard. It's the fastest way to look more masculine and it's been scientifically proven to make you look more attractive for one very reason. Because it makes you look stronger, more dominant and like a man that's filled with testosterone. And I know what you're thinking, but Jose, I can't grow a beard. That's not even an excuse, bro. I couldn't grow a beard. And if you go far back enough in my videos, there's a whole beard growth process where I showed you how I grew my beard using minoxidil on my face. What I'm trying to get at is there's always a way to grow a beard. Now there's even natural solutions like derma rollers. Derma rollers, again, scientifically proven, has no side effects. It's natural that if you roll your face every so often, you're going to stimulate hair growth. You can also be using oils and serums. Our company, Heat Grooming, we have a beard growth kit that's completely natural. Natural oils with a derma roller that if you were to use on a consistent basis for about three months, I promise you, you're going to see visible growth on your face in a natural way. And look, I'm going to hook it up for you. If you don't know where to start, if you, if, if you want to find something that's affordable, go check out Heat Grooming right now. If you guys check out the beard growth kit, I'm going to add two more kits to that. I'm going to add our beard control kit so you can keep your beard nicely trimmed so it can look good. And our new beard trimmer that has a built-in vacuum. Bro, completely revolutionary. So now, when you shave in the bathroom, no shaving. I'm going to add all three for the dudes that really want a beard. And the beard growth kit, by the way, you can use it even if you already have a beard and want to make it thicker, want to make your hair healthier, want to make it look fuller because it also acts as a conditioner while also strengthening the hair you already have. So this is really a kit for anybody that has or does not have a beard. If you guys want to check it out, it'll be linked down below. I'm also going to add 40% if you guys buy that entire bundle today. Number three. Put yourself against the wall. I need you to be doing new things so much that you feel uncomfortable at all times, that you want to go back to normal. See, the problem with most people is that they live their entire life in the exact same spot. They don't leave their hometown. They don't leave what they know. Most people will do the same trade their fathers did because that's all they know and they're so scared to experiment outside of that. That's not saying that it's a bad thing to follow your father's footsteps. What I am saying is that you as a man need to build your own path and the only way to build character and build yourself up as a man is to put yourself against the wall. And when you start doing things you're not comfortable with, things that you do not know how to do, maybe it's starting your own business, maybe it is pursuing academia, maybe your father did construction and you're trying to be a doctor, you don't know the path. That's going to suck, but that's also going to build character. I need you to put yourself in those situations and then bust your next decade, the next 10 years, busting your ass, becoming the best you can in that possible field, whatever it is, right? I don't care what field you're taking in, but I want you to take a different step. I want you to make yourself a man. Number four, become competent. I had this realization lately where I even told you guys, competence yields confidence, where if you look at all great men, men that have done great things in their life, athletes, businessmen, like the, I'm t think about the top guys. Look at their original interviews, like in the 90s or when they just started. 
let's take Messi, the GOAT, right now. Look at some of his interviews when he just started. The dude was not as, as, as confident, right? Like, that confidence wasn't vibrating off him. He was kind of shy, a little bit timid, because this is what I noticed was a consistent trait across all super hyper-successful men. They're all competent, and that competence gives them that internal confidence. In other words, because they were so maybe self-conscious because of their height or their status or their money or whatever, right? They were so self-conscious, so insecure, they, they busted their ass in one single thing to make sure they were the best at it because they had to prove something to themselves and to everyone else. And some people might call that insecure. I think that's the truest form of confidence because it's built by your own two hands. See, the people that are naturally confident, right, because they just have a bubbly personality, what are you confident about, right? There's a billion plus people that are also naturally confident and have a personality. People like this build their competence. They are the top 1%. They have the right to be confident. Finally, number five, you do not let society fool you. Being a man is not wrong. Wanting to be stronger than other men is not wrong. Wanting to be better than other men and be in the top 1%. It's not wrong. And by the way, that includes women too. Wanting to be better than the population is not wrong. Courage, assertiveness, being the breadwinner, being the protector, none of this is wrong. I want you to stop me when any of that entire list sounded toxic to you. Bro, you should strive to be those things because it gives you control. And, and here's the thing, most people categorize that as toxic and it's usually the opposite sex or weaker men, but is it toxic or is it threatening? Right? I think they're confusing the terminology because they feel threatened, right? Weak men feel threatened in the presence of a strong man, so now it's toxic. That man has too much control, but I want you to understand, I would rather be the man in control than the man that's scared of the man in control. You need to strive to be better than everybody else. Do not let society fool you.